a few of the notable interactions you've had with lions over the years that people would see on your Instagram or YouTube channel. How about the first time one jumped on your back, your heart's racing, what you remember? Yeah, I mean, look, so jumping is an interesting thing because if you are uh, anticipating the jump, like, for example, like a Megan Amy would, when they were young, always jump. Now that they're older, if they jump on me, I'm like, wow, you really are um, excited to see me today. But it's a controlled jump. But then other lions like Gabby would be um, out of the blue. She'll just come at you full force and jump on you and knock you flat. And, and then, you know, kind of roll and rough and tumble with you and then get up and run away, <laughs> you know. So the first time that happens without you um, knowing what's happening, it's like, what's happening? You know, but you soon realize that this is, you, if you look at Gabby and you understand how she, she does that to Bobcat and she does that to, you know, um, and it's normally the males that are, are more well, are more composed, you know? Females are normally quite up and down and running about. So yeah, I think it does get your adrenaline going, but you soon learn that there's nothing meant by it. It's just play. Tell about the first time one came to you in the water. Oh, wow, yeah, I'll never forget. Uh, we were taking uh, out with Meg and Amy, and I was just curious. It was just curiosity. I was like, I wonder what would happen. I walk into the dam. Because the thinking is lions do not like water. They generally don't. You know, uh, lions in the Okavango and the Delta or in, in areas where water is part and parcel of them having to hunt and go through. They tolerate it, but they're not like tigers. They don't actively go and sit in the water and wallow and cool off, you know? Um, so it was really interesting when Meg came. Ooh, once when a lioness uh, didn't want you to come near her cubs, why make the decision to crawl away on all fours versus stand up and walk away? It's the threat. Um, when you walk on your all fours, you are lower, less of a threat. And, and if, if a lion is telling you off, um, it's, it's a good way to show submission. Um, they do respond to being to submission. What were you doing when you were trying to get Matty Tao to stop attacking a newborn cub? And what happened? Yeah, what happened was uh, Tabby had uh, her sister had had some cubs and Tabby was never a good mother. Tabby was Megan Amy's mother. And that was, uh, she was disastrous. So uh, Maddie Ta had had some cubs and Maddie Ta was always a good mother, was good looking after them. And uh, what had happened on a particular day is that uh, one of Tabby's cubs had gotten amongst them. And Maddie Ta's, uh, you know, they were pretty big cubs were, rough and tumbling this little you know this youngster and i got there just in time to hear this thing squealing and it had been lacerated and it was bleeding and they were really playing rough with it you know so i thought i thought nothing of it i thought i will just go in there and i'll just pick up this cub and i'll take it back and that'll be that yeah uh no uh, i got there and, and maddie Tao thought that i was doing something to hurt her cubs so she came at me. I mean, she charged. charged yeah, yeah, she came at me not once, like three times. And the last time, I thought, this is this is it. What are you thinking as she's charging at you, and you think this could be it? Well, your natural instinct is to run, um, but every uh, every bone in your body says run, uh, but your mind says stupid, because as soon as you run, even though it's a line you know very very well it could trigger her instinct to just pursue you, you know? So your best bet is to just hold ground and make a noise or really tell her, you know, tell her off. And so, yeah, that's what you do. And the cub? Uh, I went and got my car <laughs> and I then drove back in and I drove over it, not over it, but over it with the car and then grabbed the, the little one and put it back with with Tabby. I, I wanted to talk to you about injuries. Take me through what happened where 
you're feeling unspoken pressure from your nearby family <laughs> and you go in to be with the lion. But back in the day, I always felt this pressure to perform. So, you know, uh, it was kind of like everyone would come to the park and uh, there's Kevin and he's going to go and perform like a monkey. And, and you're going to see these lines and he's going to, you know, there's the teeth and there's the claws and the wada wada, you know. And I, I, this lion had come to the park and he had been declawed. And his name was Savo, after the man eaters of Savo. A uh, really a stupid name to name a lion. Um, and so I felt sorry for him. Um, that was the real reason for me trying to connect with him. And so connected with him over, over weeks, um, started scratching him through the fence and he enjoyed it. Started going in with him, patting him and he was, he was okay. He used to roll on his back and that was, you know, that was a sign and that was cool. And, but there was something about him that some days he would just sit there at the back and look at you. And it would make my gut feel uneasy. And so I had this uh, thumb rule that if Sava didn't come up, I would not go in. That was my thumb rule. And uh, on this particular day, it was my nephew's eighth birthday party and the whole family had come to the park and, uh, on an outing. And they were wanting to see Uncle Kevin with the cheetah and Uncle Kevin with the hyena and Uncle Kevin with Tau Napoleon. And then it was Uncle Kevin can you go in with that line? Savo was next door to town Napoleon. I looked at the situation and I went, yeah, I can go in with that line. He's my mate. And they all looked at me as if to say, we'll go in with him then. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I was like, oh, do I have to? And then uh, I felt the pressure. And I, uh, yeah, okay, I'm going to go in with him. And I went to the gate. I was like, Savo, come boy. And he looked at me with that look. And my gut said, don't go, don't do it. Then I looked back and the, you know, all the kids were sitting there going, go, go. And, and so I was caught. And so I went in and I felt uneasy and I like walked to the side and up the side of the enclosure. And, and then he was just waiting. Was like, like tapping, you can see him like in the movies. And once I got to a point where he knew I couldn't get out, and then he came running, uh, charging, and he, he, there was nothing I could do. I couldn't get out. And so he reared up and smacked me with a shot of the paw on my nose, which caused an instant like nosebleed. Also stunned me because I don't remember from there go, going to the middle of the enclosure. So he dragged me from the fence to the middle of the enclosure. And your family initially my, is thinking this is a joke part of the game they think it's a joke i think it's part of the action my brother-in-law in fact is saying to everyone calm down it's it's normal this is what he does it's part of the gig and i'm you know i kind of come to in the middle of the enclosure and he had actually um hooked me with my belt you saw how strong they are i mean he picked me up and uh, dragged me to the middle of the enclosure but my belt had actually severed and, and tore, leather belt, um, which became my nephew's like, uh, gift, almost he had it in his room for many years to come. But um, at that point, then I think my brother-in-law then realized that this wasn't a joke and this wasn't um, part of the, the act and that Sava was actually serious. And so, luckily, um, one of the other colleagues who worked with me came banging sticks. And uh, that was a distraction. And so, Savo, he came into the enclosure and Savo uh, looked at him and, and then went, OK, I'm going to go and have a go at you, which allowed me to get up and get out. Uh, not, you know, after, b before he had he had bitten me on my arm and he had bitten me on my, my leg here and on my calf and he had tried to bite me here but it got my, my belt and my, my shirt. Did you think you were going to die? You don't have time to think that. You just have time to um, react in the way that you would react in a situation like that. You don't have time to 
um, break it down and think, oh my gosh, this is it, or it's just, you just do, yeah. One of the lines you were closest to, Thor, um, take me through the attack during filming. Yeah, I mean, this is the learning your lessons about pushing um, and pressure. You know, during the, the filming of that feature film, it was a, a lot of pressure on my shoulders to um, make things happen. Uh, you got crew and you got a lot of people uh, have paid a lot of money and the, 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 the money dial was turning. Right. And so um, at that particular point, we were really missing one component to a scene. So now there's Thor, the most amazing line, and he's not wanting to fight this animatronic fake cat, who quite clearly he sees as fake. And he says, there's no intention for me to pretend to fight this animal. The pressure is, is that we've got the other half of the fight because the white animatronic lion and the brown lion fought it like it was a real line. And so now we've got the missing, the, the, the hero of the film. This is Litsatsi, uh, the white lion in the film. He's not, he's not been a hero. So my job is to make him a hero. And I'm going up to him and I'm like, come on boy, fight the lion. And he's going, Arr. and I'm like, come on, you can do it. You know, and he's continually telling me, piss off and so you know again push 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 and eventually he snaps and he he just he just like as as quick as they can move grabs my arm and and pushes me like from here at least to the door just grabs me and pushes me up against the fence oh, the crew was shooting <laughs> through these hatches and and they all like standing there in consternation and and he's got his arm in my my arm in his mouth and he's he looks at me i'll never forget the look and he's like <laughs> like spits my arm out and goes okay enough you know and he goes back to eating the meat that was at the the foot of this animatronic line and it was again it was a really life lesson kind of a turning point yeah why did it make you feel ashamed? Because I pushed the boundary so much to make people happy. I was like, why would I ruin a relationship over that? The one that's taken so long to nurture. And I, I, it took me a long time to regain his trust.